Hey guys, welcome back. Besiege Early Access Coverage. This is episode 24. I'm an Eggman, and today we're taking a look at perpetual motion engines, one design in particular. Then we're going to take a look at some applications of that design. We've been messing around with these for a little while, and it's been, you know, kind of a while, not just uh, being able to create the design. It's not my design, I got it from someone else. It's actually very simple. The first thing we're going to do is show you how to do it. But then actually translating it into something that might be useful is, is a little bit different. It's it's a little bit more of a challenge than actually building the module. Now I saw this in a YouTube video, uh, but I couldn't find anywhere anyone claiming credit for the initial design. So the best I can do is say it's not mine. But what we're going to do is we're going to make a very simple base for ourselves. And then we're going to lower it to the ground because it's better to lower it before we start the simulation than to start the simulation and have it lowered forcibly for us by gravity. And then we're going to take uh, an unpowered wheel. And we're just going to plop it down like that. It seems very important that you use an unpowered wheel, and I don't know why. If you try and use other things, it doesn't work properly. It's a very finicky kind of design, and it's not the fault of the person who came up with the idea. It's just we are, in fact, taking advantage of a bit of a glitch uh, in the game logic in order to produce this. So just keep that in mind. Uh, it, it, it is a little bit finicky. So on top of that wheel, we're going to attach uh, a single block for now because we're just doing the very basic version of the drive. Then we're going to get some sliders and it starts out like that. It's kind of sideways. I like to put them up and down just for the aesthetic kind of thing. It, it, I don't think it really matters really, but if you wanted to have it up and down, just press R before you attach it and it'll rotate the little guy and then you can put it however you want. And then we need some pistons, and the easiest way i found to keep this straight is you start off looking at it sort of like this so you can see one of these. And you start with one side, you can do right like I'm going to do, or you can do it all on the left side. You do right side, turn 90 degrees, right side, right side, right side. And that's going to have them all oriented the way that you want relative to one another. And like I say, you could do it backwards, you could do it left side. It's uh, not a huge difference uh, aside from the fact that the the direction of spin will be the opposite i think if you do left side first just off the top of my head that makes sense and then you collect all collect connect all of the pistons like that with um contractible springs so now we just have to set up some uh very basic parameters i'm going to set up uh, i like one for my pistons and you set to toggle mode that's very important and then we're going to be doing this around to the other three, so paste it, copy it to the clipboard, choose that guy, paste it, that guy, paste it, and that guy, paste it, just saves a little bit of time. And then you want to select one of your springs, and the only thing we're going to change is the elasticity beyond limit, slide it all the way up. Same thing, copy it to the clipboard, select that guy, paste, paste, paste. And now, if we start it up, and we press 1, it goes absolutely bonkers. And that's the basics of this whole perpetual motion engine is it's the, the pistons are pushing in a certain direction and they will keep trying to push in that direction and the springs are pulling in a certain direction and they will keep trying to pull in that direction and between the two of them and the sliders, uh, it goes absolutely uh, nuts. This is probably the fastest rotation I can think of uh, getting out of anything like this unless you were to set up uh, a transmission of some sort and doing the the gear change differential ratio yeah that thing you could probably get a pretty rapid rotation out of that as well but it will be huge relative to this like this is an extremely compact like three by three by one setup not counting the wheel that it's sitting on and this is the kind of thing that we're getting out of it now this is where we're talking about the glitch components because if you look at how far out these pistons are relative to where they started that's not working as intended, especially if you press the button to toggle the pistons off, they all come back to normal. If you were to tell me that these things have all flown apart and it's a one-shot deal and if it ever slows down it's all just going to collapse to the ground because the pistons are no longer attached to the sliders, then I would believe that. But given how far out they extend, uh, and the sliders as well, I, I think it's pretty safe to say that this is the kind of thing could get patched out tomorrow and nobody would complain about it as their favorite feature that the devs had no right to take away because it was awesome. I wouldn't complain if the devs left it in, necessarily, 
but we just have to be aware of that if you're you know duplicating this uh sometime after this video was made and it doesn't work and you've done it block by block exactly as i've shown it here uh it's probably been patched out <laughs> just fair warning so that's the basic shenanigan now we've got this rapid motion and we have to kind of figure out what to do with it so we're going to take a look at a couple of the things that i've already built and all of the things we're about to look at will be available as downloads uh in the information section below the video so this is one of the really basic things that people who have uh, grabbed hold of this design and decided to try and do things with it uh, have, have done. Because if you look at it the way that it's demonstrated, the way it's put together, it just kind of lends itself uh, very, very easily to making some sort of um, rotor blade kind of thing that will allow you to get a, a pretty decent uh, lift out of this whole mechanism. And I just put a little flying thing on it. it not because we need it because it just looked kind of fun a little bit of a hat for the thing but here's the same mechanism that we had before sitting on the wheel only this time what i did and I'll, this was kind of important this was part of an experiment that i did is i put uh unpowered cog on the origin block this time and then i put the wheel on the cog and then i ran a brace you, you can actually see it there when you can see through the the uh, wooden block i put a brace from the top of the wheel and ran it through the wheel to the top of the cog and that fuses the wheel and the cog together so that we can translate this rotational motion into the cog and then you'll see when we fire it up these guys are going to be spinning now this this apparatus down here has nothing to do with what we're doing up here like i said this down here was just part of an experiment i wanted to see if it would be easy to get this motion into the cogs so that we can maybe do some other things with it but all of this is for naught without a demonstration so we started up and do the same thing it gets up to speed and it, it, like it, it speeds up so fast and then right away it's it's way up in the air and you can see we'll zoom in a bit you can see the cogs are going uh they're moving very very quickly and eventually it starts to do like an orbit kind of thing uh this is where if we had ammunition of some sort we would be raining hell upon our opponents uh and it will eventually crash because it's not balanced there's no kind of weight thing going on and i would suspect based on other things I've seen that the rotational movement of the cogs is also having some kind of influence on what's happening here. We just I've done this a few times to make sure that the thing worked and I've always been kind of hopeful that we would uh, hit the sheet on the way down but I'm not sure if we will. I think usually we're a little bit too far out or at least in the past tests that's been the case. Yeah we, we just kind of missed it. We wrecked it and then it stops basically slows down as soon as it starts hitting the ground if it doesn't fly to fly apart on its own it'll come to almost a stop and then you can just press the button and stop it again so that's just a little uh do jobber that you can mess around with very very finicky i've noticed with this you can do an identical setup without the cogs on the origin block set everything up and it'll work and then you can come back and do something pretty much in your own mind exactly the same and it won't so that's why I'm using this one is because I know it would work and that's why I'm giving you the download not because it's useful but you can play around with it and at least you'll know that this one will work. If you're having a hard time assembling your own flying dojobby it doesn't come up to speed as fast as you would expect. I, I don't know what to tell you because it's really inconsistent on my end as well. I just don't know exactly what needs to be changed to make it work every single time. But this one will work every time. This design seems to be pretty good. All right, now this monstrosity is something that I spent a lot of time on tweaking, uh, moving things around, trying to come up with different ideas to make it work. Still doesn't work, but I kept it and I'm showing it to you guys so that you can see kind of firsthand what's happening instead of me just telling you, oh, it doesn't work so well for that. You'll kind of get an idea of what I was doing. And then if you have some ideas of your own, this will be the second download link available in the information section below the video. You can download it and try it on your own. If you haven't seen my video on the three-speed transmission, uh, you might want to look at that so that you have an idea of what's going on here. I'll go over it very briefly, but we go into it in detail in a previous video. This is kind of a culmination of a lot of different things that I've done. We've got the perpetual motion engine, the three-speed transmission, the giant wheels from the hamster cage. Not always all my ideas, but, you know, taking them and applying them in different things and making them ours uh, by adding our own ideas to them. So what we've got here is basically the perpetual motion drive or engine oriented vertically instead of horizontally so that it'll spin around sort of like you would expect from a wheel kind of like so 
connected to the wooden wheel just like it was in what we had set up before and the cog and then the cogs here just like we had in the last one flying around and then we connect to this cog on the other side and then we have our powered cog here and this is what's going to allow us to change the speed of the rotation theoretically in the video where i did the three speed transmission we connected directly to the origin block or the wooden block or whatever was here in the middle of all these cogs and that was how we were able to translate the motion of these two planetary gears so to speak into the circular motion that's changed speed based on the speed of this and the speed of that so that's kind of what we're looking at here and the idea is this spins very very fast when it's at its top speed and we wanted to slow that down so that we could at least get this thing going before it tore itself apart that was a theory let's take a look at what happens you can see it's it's kind of a little bit wobbly and that's because we've got it on these new uh, high friction pads and these are as much to give it a little bit of a lift from the middle and intentionally make it wobbly uh, as to give it a little bit of grip as it's trying to theoretically roll around. And they push the button to start up the machine and it's, it's trying real hard. You can see it's trying very, very hard to make this work. And even if we give some speed to the, the cog over here to let this thing spin up a little bit faster because there's less resistance, all the stuff that's going on, it's still not fast enough to really do anything that we want it to do. I, I did try a number of different orientations instead of having the braces coming out from here uh, out to these guys. I had some ballast blocks coming out and then the braces connected out to here. So it was a little bit more natural looking that way and it still was the same outcome. And the reason why I wanted to show you this is because it illustrates that you can get the high speed but very low torque. It's kind of like a Dremel tool. You, it, it turns really, really fast when it's allowed to go up to high speed, but as soon as it meets resistance, it basically shuts right down. Something to be aware of in the, the design ideas category is that you're not going to be able to make this one engine turn tons and tons of things. I haven't tried stacking multiple engines on the same shaft, so to speak. If you think of it as a drive shaft running all the way along uh, and maybe where the perpetual drive motion is now have our perpetual drive engine is now have one or two more to the right of it. Maybe that would help or it could just be another big waste of time. But like I say, this will be the number two option in the list of downloads available in the information section below the video. We're going to move on to something a little bit more successful, not completely successful, but a little bit better. Now this is just kind of getting a little bit bizarre. This was, um, I wanted to try and take the idea with the large wheels, again from the hamster cage, or hamster wheel, uh, two drive motors, one on either side, so that theoretically we could, with the, a drive box added on, or a transmission added on, wow, my brain is just toast, potentially get uh, different directions out of the, the, the shenanigans, take two. Now this one is just bizarre. I, I It kind of came out as an idea and then it changed and it modified itself practically and it ended up being this, which is just so, so strange. It's got two perpetual drive engines, one on either side, different from what we were just talking about in that these aren't both intended to steer one unified wheel or, you know, turn one unified wheel. These are intended if we were to expand on this project to give us the opportunity to have each wheel going in different directions. So if we wanted to turn, theoretically, we could do that. It would be going so fast, realistically speaking, being able to turn, not really something that you'd want to be doing. But one of the issues that I had is the same as the issue that we were having in the previous attempts, is the, the lack of torque and actually getting these wheels up to speed. So what I decided to do was maybe I would come up with uh, a launcher, so to speak, that would hold the, the whole thing up in the air so you could bring the drives up to speed and then lower it to the ground and just let it go. And it, because it's so far from one end to the other, everything that I tried just snapped. It just broke. There was nothing that I could do to stop it. So I said, okay, well, maybe what we could do is have something so that we can lower, as you see here, these wheels 
that would lift the, the large wheels off the ground and then we could bring the, the motors up to speed and then we could raise these back up again, just release the pistons so they come back up and it would go. All right, now this guy is anything but consistent. You have to keep that in mind if you're gonna download it, it'll be option number three in the, the list of downloads in the information section below the video. You, it's very simple to use, but it's not going to behave the same way every time. What you do is you press 1, and that'll extend the pistons, and it basically wants to start turning, but there's too much resistance. We don't even have the high friction pads here that give it an opportunity to kind of teeter over and start rolling a little bit on its own. So it, it just kind of sits there. It's ready to go, and what we have to do is get some of the weight off of the uh, the wheels, these big wheels, so that it can start turning them. I've set these all as low as possible, the weights of the ballast blocks, but they're just, it's it's too big and they're too many. So what we do is we've got this section down here, these pistons upon which are attached the wheels are set to extend much slower than they normally would. They're normally set to 1.0, these are set to 0 0.2, so we press 2 to extend them, and this, this is what happened. This is and it's, they just take off. They're like, screw this, we're out of here. The wheels are gone. I wanted this temporary structure that would let me get this thing going. And what ended up happening is the wheels themselves that were supposed to be turning and moving us around wound up being that temporary structure. It works even better if it doesn't tip forward onto its face because then it'll kind of catch itself on these wheels a bit and keep it going. But as it is, we are at the bounds of the world. We can't go any farther. We're just spinning our tires, so to speak. And that means the end of the episode. So I hope you enjoyed it. It's it's kind of silly and a little bit fun. And the next episode, we're going to try some more designs with the Perpetual Motion Engine. So if you want to be notified when I add that, you can subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on social media. Links for that are below the downloads in the information section below the video. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.